Hello everyone, welcome to Power Electronics Tutorials. In this video, we are going to discuss the power semiconductor devices. The power semiconductor devices are generally used as on off switches in power control circuits. These devices are classified as shown in figure 1 here. Let us start with diodes. Within diodes, we have three subcategorization general purpose diodes, high speed diodes, and Schottky diodes. Then in the second categorization, we have thyristors, within which we have a large variety of devices available. And lastly, we have transistors, among which BJT, MOSFET, IGBT, and the SIT are the most prominently used transistors. Let us now discuss each of these devices in brief detail, and I'll start with power diodes. Power diodes are made of silicon p-n junction with two terminals, anode and cathode. When the anode is made positive with respect to the cathode, the diode is said to be forward biased. The diode conducts fully when the diode voltage is more than the cut-in or the threshold voltage of 0.7 volts for silicon and 0.3 volts for germanium. Conducting diode will have a small voltage drop across it, which is equal to the ohmic drop of the device. On the other hand, when cathode is made positive with respect to anode, the diode is said to be reverse biased. A small reverse current called as the leakage current flows across the reverse biased diode. This leakage current increases with the increase in the reverse applied voltage until the avalanche voltage is reached at which stage the diode simply breaks down. Power diodes are generally classified as general purpose diodes, High speed diodes are also called as fast recovery diodes, and lastly, Scott key diode. Let us once again discuss each one of them in brief detail, and I'll start with general purpose diodes. General purpose diodes have a very high reverse recovery time of about 25 microseconds. They are used in low speed or low frequency applications such as line commutated converters, diode rectifiers, and converters for a low input frequency of up to 1000 Hz. Diode ratings cover a very wide range with current ratings less than 1 ampere to several thousands of amperes and with voltage ratings from 50 volts to 5000 volts. These diodes are generally manufactured by diffusion process. Alloy type rectifier diodes are used in welding power supplies. They are most cost effective and rugged and their ratings can go up to 300 amps and 1000 volts. Let us now move on to fast recovery diodes. These diodes have a very short recovery time, usually less than 5 microseconds. The key area of application is the transfer of electrical power, that is freewheeling of AC to DC and DC to AC converter circuits. Their current ratings range from less than 1 ampere to hundreds of amperes with voltage ratings ranging from 50 volts to 3000 volts. The use of fast recovery diodes is preferred for freewheeling in SCR circuits due to low recovery losses, lower junction temperature and reduced DI by DT. For high voltage ratings of more than 400 volt, the diffusion process is employed and the recovery time is regulated by platinum or gold diffusion. Epitaxial diodes with a rating of less than 400 volt have faster switching speeds than diffused diodes. Epitaxial diodes have a very small base width resulting in a very fast recovery time of approximately 15 nanoseconds. Lastly, we move on to the Scott key diodes. A Scott key diode has a metal and a semiconductor junction. A metal coating is deposited on a thin N-type silicon epitaxial layer. In the Scott key diode, there is a greater barrier for electron flow from the metal towards the semiconductor. As Scott key diode is forward biased, free electrons on the N side gain enough energy to flow into the metal causing forward current. Since the metal has no holes, there is no storage charge minimizing the recovery time. Therefore, the Scott key diode can be turned off faster than the ordinary p-n junction diode. The Scott key diode has a relatively low forward voltage drop and reverse recovery loss. However, the leakage current is higher than that of the p-n junction diode. The maximum permissible voltage is about 100 volt. 
and the current ratings range from about 1 ampere to 300 ampere. The operating frequency can be as high as 100 to 300,000 hertz. In this table, I have given a comparison between the three different types of diodes we just discussed for your reference. With that, we move on to the second type of power semiconductor device, which is a thyristor. A thyristor is a three terminal, controlled turn on but uncontrolled turn off, unidirectional current carrying capability device. The terminals of a thyristor are called anode, cathode, and gate. Gate terminal is also called the control terminal of the device and plays a very important part in the thyristor turn on. A thyristor requires two voltages to turn on. First one is a positive anode to cathode voltage represented by VAK and the second one is a positive gate to cathode voltage represented by VG. When VAK is positive and a small current is passed through the gate terminal, the thyristor starts to conduct. Once the thyristor is turned on, the gate loses control over the device. The thyristor has a very small ohmic drop during its conduction, which is around 0.5 to 2 volts. A thyristor can be turned off by making the anode to cathode voltage negative or the current across the device less than a specified minimum value called as the holding current. When the type of input voltage is AC, the thyristors turn off due to the natural characteristics of the input source. Such thyristors are called line commutated thyristors. On the other hand, if the type of the input voltage is DC, extra circuitry called as commutation circuitry is needed to turn off a conducting thyristor and such thyristors are called forced commutated thyristors. The line commutated thyristors have ratings of up to 2500 volt and 4000 amperes or 5000 volts and 2500 amperes. High speed reverse blocking thyristors have a very small turn off time of about 10 to 20 microseconds at 1200 volt and 2000 ampere ratings. In this slide, I have given a brief subdivision of the different thyristors available in the market today. I just discussed the forced commutated and line commutated thyristors. Further, we have gate turn off thyristors, which is also a thyristor, but now gate has full control of both turn on as well as turn off. Then we have reverse conducting thyristors, which can conduct current in both directions. Then we have static induction thyristors, gate assisted turn off thyristors, which are pretty similar to gate turn off thyristors. Then we have light activated thyristors which are called as light activated silicon controlled rectifier and lastly we also have MOS controlled thyristors. We will discuss more about thyristors in one of our next videos when I start the chapter thyristors. With that we come to the last power semiconductor category which is power transistors. Transistors which have high voltage and high current rating are called power transistors. Power transistors are used as switching elements and are operated in saturation region resulting in a low on state voltage drop. Switching speed of transistors is much higher than that of the thyristors and they are extensively used in DC to DC and DC to AC converters with inverse parallel connected diodes to provide bidirectional current flow. However, the voltage and current ratings of power transistors are much lower than that of the thyristors. Transistors are used in low to medium power applications. Transistors are continuous gate or base voltage requirement devices and to keep it in the conducting state, a continuous base or gate voltage is compulsory. Coming to the categorization, in this particular syllabus, we will be mainly concentrating on three types of transistors starting with the bipolar junction transistor, then we have the MOSFET and lastly a combination of BJT and MOSFET which is called as an IGBT and stands for insulated gate bipolar transistor. Let me now give a very brief discussion on each of these transistors starting with BJTs. A BJT is a three terminal device a control turn on and control turn off device. BJTs are broadly categorized into NPN and PNP type transistors. 
you should note that it is a current controlled device. It has three terminals namely emitter, base and collector. In power electronics, BJTs are mainly used as switching devices in power converter circuits with a frequency of less than 10,000 Hz. The power rating of power BJTs can be up to 100 kW and 1000 volt. Unlike a thyristor, a BJT requires continuous voltage across its base terminal to sustain it in the on state. It has two junctions namely base to emitter junction and collector to base junction. It is commonly operated in common emitter configuration. When both junctions are forward bias, the transistor operates in the saturation region. When both junctions are reverse bias, the transistor operates in the cutoff region. And when base to emitter junction is forward bias and collector to base junction is reverse bias, the BJT operates in active region. We will discuss more about BJTs in one of my next videos when I talk about the steady state characteristics of BJT. Coming to the power MOSFETs, they are applicable for high speed applications and are available with ratings of up to 1000 volt and 50 amp at a frequency range of several tens of kilohertz. A MOSFET is a voltage control device and is comparatively faster than a BJT with respect to switching speed. A MOSFET has three terminals namely source, drain and gate. They are broadly categorized into depletion type and enhancement type MOSFETs and are further categorized into N-channel and P-channel MOSFETs. Lastly, about IGBT which is insulated gate bipolar transistor. An IGBT is a combination of a BJT and a MOSFET and derives positive characteristics from both of them. An IGBT has three terminals namely emitter, collector and gate. IGBT is faster with respect to switching speed compared to a BJT, however, it is slower when it is compared to a MOSFET. Right. With that, we have discussed the basic categorization of power semiconductor devices. That's it about this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.